this opportunity to uh, to chat a little bit about um, about how I learned Rust. So, um, you know, we here at Rustlins, we are a beginner friendly meetup. There are a couple of people here who who barely have 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 scratched the surface of Rust and who have barely had the chance or opportunity to dive deep into into Rust as a programming language, let alone uh, create some 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 uh, production code with it, some some systems that run. Uh, and are used by real users, not just just demos. And uh, as it turns out, I myself had the same problem. I, uh, most of the time, I'm writing JavaScript and TypeScript um, for about I don't know 15 years now. I haven't I haven't I've barely touched a different programming language. But Rust was one of those programming languages um, who uh, uh, caught my interest. It looked interesting. It was uh, um, the people around the community um, had a great way of describing it. Especially you know uh, Ryan Levick, who was here at the very first Rust Lins meetup. Um, was was um, a guest in, in my podcast once and did uh, some 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 great introduction to Rust and ever since I wanted to try it out, but I had the problem I didn't know how to start, um, especially when you when you've been doing uh, uh, one particular programming language for so so long and especially once you have um, um, a, a certain age and some responsibilities like I don't know kids, taking the time off to learn something new. Um, gets really, really hard. Um, but I found a way. I found a way to learn a programming language, to learn basically almost any programming language, like uh, I have to pick a little bit, 52 programming language languages through a tool called The Exorcist. And I'm going to share my screen now because I guess that's still missing. You should see my entire screen right now. All righty. So this is The Exorcism homepage. It's called Exorcism. Um, that's why my talk is called The Exorcist. Um, and it's code practice and mentorship for everyone. Um, um, this is their tagline. Um, what they are doing is providing an interactive system. You, you sign up to so-called tracks um, where you can uh, um, learn a programming language exercise by exercise by exercise. They feature a ton of programming languages, um, 52 of them. There they are. Here's the old, uh, uh, the overall logo uh, uh, wall, uh, and you see some familiar uh, logos here. And one thing that I was interested in was Rust down there. This is the access homepage. I can't access anymore because I'm logged in always. And this is how it looks once you are logged in. So this is me about 15 years ago, um, and this is the one track that I have joined, the Rust track. Um, I already completed 32 exercises, and for me, it was a really good way to um, um, get familiar with the programming language. So if I go in, uh, you can see that there are 30, 93 exercises, and those are the exercises that I have already completed everywhere where has a check mark. And I did start um, at the very first exercise going through to one that um, alphamatics where I, I, I still have to find my way around. But there are tons of, of exercises there. Even uh, one that you might have developed already in Rust, a simple linked list, because that seems like to be one thing where even the compiler gives you a proper solution for what you want to solve with all the boxes and options that you get, uh, down to the one exercise or a couple of exercises that are really, really hard, like maybe uh, the doubly linked list. I'm not sure if I want to reach that level. Anyhow, um, if we uh, uh, look at one particular exorcism exercise, um, what you get is an introduction of what the exercise is all about. So there's a couple, uh, some introduction there. Uh, it explains to you how you should approach this um, exercise. Uh, it's not only that, but there's um, uh, some tests to it. I'm getting to that in a bit. And also some, some commands on how to run them with the programming language that you have been using. Um, this is, so the exercises are somehow similar across all the programming languages that they are, but they have been adapted and refactored to suit the needs of the programming language that you are currently using. Not only that doubly linked lists are marked hard, um, but also some, some hints regarding uh, uh, crates that you can fetch on cargo. Um, also some information on how to approach, let's say Unicode characters with graphemes, uh, and which crates to use for that. So there's lots of support and lots of information, particularly tied to Rust. Also, um, there was one uh, example where I had to work with lifetimes, uh, uh, custom created lifetimes for the very first time. 
there was an explanation on what to do and where to find information and some guidance on that. This is the introduction. Uh, one thing that I liked particularly about that is that I had to download the whole thing. So there's a command line tool called Exorcism. Uh, I installed it with Brew back in the day. Um, I had to download um, um, the example. There's no, no online editor, even though it's possible. Um, and I think they're working on, on a relaunch of Exorcism where you can use um, 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 an online editor. But I found it particularly nice to work with the real tools um, on my hard disk because uh, um, I was able to learn the tool chain. So of course, demos and exercises and learnings are always great if you, have, if you don't have to worry about, about tooling. But in my particular case, um, I thought uh, I want to get around how to use Cargo, what the commands are there, how to compile them, uh, to, to work with Rust up, et cetera. So this is also why I think that the um, um, very first exercise, the Hello World, um, doesn't get enough recognition. Uh, it's not about getting familiar with the main syntax there. It's about um, getting to know the tool chain, getting to know how you compile stuff, getting to know how to create the binary that you can actually run. So once you are downloading exercises from Exorcism, you get the whole uh, introduction in a readme file again, and you have um, two folders. One is the source file with the librs. So this is, um, uh, I guess, the this is the ETL example uh, where we try to, to uh, get a list that looks like that and create the list um, that looks entirely different. Uh, we have to look it up in the tests um, in a couple of seconds. So there's one librs file, and this librs file is usually empty. So this is already the implementation, implementation that I did. Um, and there's also a couple of tests. And the very first test is active. The other ones are usually to be ignored. Um, and you can learn a lot from the tests. So this is something that I that I really, really enjoyed working with Exorcism because you have test-driven development. You have tests that are optimized for the programming language that you work with. This is also what I think very, very important. Um, and then uh, you can learn from the tests how you want to develop your exercise. What I usually do is like going really test by test by test by test. Sometimes my algorithm that I developed was good enough to just pass all tests and then it just needed some information some some adjustments in the end um, at other times uh, i had to activate all the tests to get around what i wanted to do or what i wanted to achieve there was one exercise that i found particularly challenging which uh, which was scorecards for bowling because never ever in my life have i been playing bowling uh, uh, not even back in the day when it was still allowed to hang out together. So um, still, um, I managed to come around that. I, I even read up some Wikipedia articles there. But usually, the tests are good enough and all that you need um, to find your way around what is a question from you. Like, what is the challenge? What do you want to solve? Um, also, if um, 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 it's for me, it's also great to, to have tests to, to know if what I'm doing was actually right. Um, to know if my um, exercise um, has been successful. There are also sometimes bonus activities where I can say, okay, up until then, it's it's just like the challenge level describes it to be. But from there on, there are some bonus challenges that you can take where it gets a little bit harder. And they're also very, very exciting. The fun stuff is once you start submitting your um, your exercise, you can submit um, almost like, like having some version control. And once you are done and once you think you're really ready, you click the submit button in the in the um, in the user interface. And that, uh, what happens then? Let's go to one that I already solved. This is the grade school example where I also had to reformat some. Um, some some um, um, data. So I got data in one way and had to format it in another way. Um, here was the test suite that I was working with. Uh, and this was my solution. So I even had to implement um, a, a struct there. Um, this was one where I even got a star from the community because what happens then is you have three possibilities. First, I could request mentor feedback. So there are real actual people behind exorcism who take a look at your solution and give you feedback on that. You can ask them questions and they will answer. Disclaimer, not in time. 
So I waited about three weeks for my answer because they are swarmed with um, um, with students who want to have feedback. And um, I, what I know, it's it's just labor of love. It's it's not something they get actually paid for. Um, they um, they do it in the spare time and try to mentor mentor you as good as possible. I requested uh, one once feedback where I tried to to create um, a prime number algorithm where I thought, okay, there must be a much more idiomatic way to do so. It took a couple of times, a couple of days until I got feedback, but the feedback was very valuable with a couple of links, a couple of solutions that I could link into to get um, uh, um, inspired or get more feedback to. And that is one thing that I actually like most, which is few community solutions. So I can take a look at, at uh, uh, solutions. Here's my style, look at that. Um, about solutions, everybody else did. So um, usually you find out that there are a couple of people that you, that are doing the, the, um, the exercises with you, like they have a similar progress. Um, I guess I guess this person I, I peeked into into their results a couple of times. You can open them if they want to share it. You can you can read their solution, get inspired, and if they have some some comments there, it's it's always very very helpful. So what I started doing was um, commenting my examples um, uh, as well. Uh, try to give some feedback. Try to give a comment on what I thought about creating my solution, submitting it. Um, and hopefully people found it interesting. So there is the possibility, it's not it's not very active, but there's the possibility of a discussion um, that's going on and that is happening. So um, help 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 others help you um, uh, and help help you help others. I guess that's the mantra of this particular thing. Um, and with that, I, I think I, I did about a third of all the exercises and I think it got really, really far to, to try my own um, um, example afterwards and to try to work on some actual production code um, this is why I also, I guess, I didn't try another exercise for, for the last 30 days or so. Well, I'm eager to, to dig deeper into what's offered there. Um, and for that, I think exorcism helped me a lot. Um, I can recommend it to everybody who has no idea how to start. You know, you can read books, you can watch tutorials, you can read blog articles, which I do a lot. So, so, so I read a lot. I, I try to be informed on what's happening. I go to online conferences. Uh, uh, Stefan is here in, in the Zoom chat. He, he did a great job with his colleagues for, for Rustfest uh, just recently. Uh, I enjoyed watching those talks a lot. I still had no clue how to start. And this helped me giving me very mundane, very generic examples. You know, computer science 101, the stuff that you learn when you are uh, um, in, in, in high school, when you are at university, very basic examples that bring you closer to the programming language again, without forcing you to, to work with a, a certain domain, like creating a web service, like creating uh, some, some compiler stuff. It's something where you can focus on learning the parts of the programming language that you need to know. And, and to be fair, Rust is, is not a, a programming language like any other. It's, it's a very particular programming language and it has some quirks. It has some things that you have to learn by using it. It's not, it, it, I guess it doesn't help just reading about it. Um, so with that, I was able to learn a lot about it. Um, I can recommend it to everybody who wants to get started and that doesn't know how. Uh, try it out, it's free after all. Um, and have fun with it. And also, if the folks here uh, aren't able to give you feedback in time, check out our Discord. Um, you find me there in the random channel asking all the stupid questions, but being very happy that they get all the good answers from our wonderful community. So thank you for, for teaching me Rust to the folks in our Discord channel and to the folks at Exorcism. And that's my lightning talk. I was lightning fast. Are there any questions? Yeah, there are two, there are two questions. Cool. Yes, let's give me a sec to get my notes up. Right, yeah, Carl, Carl asks, if, um, uh, how good is the platform in terms of teaching idiomatic Rust? Not only to teach Rust, but also good Rust, you know? Yeah, that's that's a very good question, and and um, especially thanks to Carl because um, he's keeping up with my shit a lot. <laughs> Once I'm 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 typing questions in the in the random channel, uh, and and Carl uh, um, 
taught me a lot of, of idiomatic Rust and brought me to a lot of resources about idiomatic Rust because this is not particularly well covered. So you don't get feedback on your solution by folks who know idiomatic Rust until you ask for it through the mentors, which you know can be a little bit um, uh, a little bit slow. Um, here you are on your own, and you have to um, you have to to um, find your um, resources yourself. One thing um, that I have to um, have to look uh, I have to mention is that if you find the right people once they publish their solutions, you can learn idiomatic Rust by looking at other code. So usually idiomatic Rust, um, and this is one thing that I, I particularly love about Rust, um, is um, you, you, you see when it's idiomatic because it looks nice. The moment it's not idiomatic, you have lots of asterisks and ampersands in there, and you think, okay, this this might not be not be the way the way to use it. You know when you write idiomatic Rust by reading other people's code, um, and this is where my code got a lot lot better. So every time I had a, a broken or, or 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 solution I was not not too happy with, um, I peeked into the solutions because this is a trick. Um, if if we are here, you know, the, those are um, um, here are the community solutions. This URL does not change, so there's no hash behind it or some ID. Um, if you know what the name of your of your exercise is, you can find the solutions while you are coding. You don't have to submit it. And this was something where I peaked all the time. So I already knew a couple of couple of uh, images and couple of um, nicknames there to find some people where I could peek into their solution to learn idiomatic Rust. But they don't focus on idiomatic Rust on their own. Um, what they do is once you get into the hairy stuff, they provide you with enough resources to read up on that. Um, but that doesn't happen all the time. Okay, okay. That brings one question from myself as well. <laughs> is there a possibility to share your solution, how you solve the problem? Um, yeah, so the moment I submit it, I have the possibility to say, let's make it public for everyone who is enrolled. Ah, but yeah, I okay. guess you have to be enrolled in the course to view it. Um, let me just try it out by opening my solution for grad school in a private tab where I'm not logging in. Nope, you can share it with everyone. <laughs> That's cool. Perfectly. So if you That's want to look cool. at my grad school solution, write down the URL right now. I'll share it in Discord later on. <laughs> ah, okay, cool. Yeah, very cool. So there's one last question left. Um, does Excessive uh, exist in other, uh, other languages too? For example, Lots other programming languages, like but German. In German? Or... Okay. Um, as far as I know, uh, nope, uh, not not at the moment. So I'm have have the website open right now. I don't think so. So I ah, think okay. it's, it's English only. Right. And um, I see a question in the in the Discord channel. Um, it's free. It's 100% free forever. So so um, I guess it's it's. Um, um, some are supported by companies uh, so that they can keep up running the service, um, but the platform is free and will be free. All right, yeah, pretty cool. Thank you very much. So Thank you for having me. It was fun. Um, and I'm looking forward to, to some talks from the pros who actually know what they are doing. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you. All right.